Welcome back. It's still COVID-19 360. For some weeks now, we've been having a conversation about fact-checking information. I remember just uh, uh, about two or three weeks ago, there was a video that popped up on the internet by some doctor in Texas who said that she had found a cure uh, for COVID-19. That generated a lot of conversation. And so uh, it necessitated uh, this conversation about fact-checking information and how accessible they are to Ghanaians across the board. And the fact that, you know, in the past, we've talked to Dr. Betha about the use of neem tree leaves uh, as a cure for COVID-19, as a way to boost your immune system, and how true all these are. Uh, a lot of Ghanaians have been relying on all kinds of remedies just to protect themselves and, you know, uh, also prevent themselves from catching the virus. But are they the right uh, remedies? And how do you ensure that you're getting the right information? And that's what today's conversation is about. We'll also chip in a bit about how uh, accessible information is to persons living with disability and whether the policies that have been put in place to ensure that Ghanaians are protected have favored them, uh, you know, in any way at all. And so joining us in this conversation today, we have Adiza Tomoro Maiga. She is the project coordinator for the uh, Media, Foundation, Media Foundation for West Africa. Um, and she is the project coordinator for the Fact Check Project for COVID-19. Right. All right, good to have you in the studios. We also have uh, Christopher Agbega. He's the project coordinator for the Ghana Federation of Disability Organizations. And it's good to have you in the studios Thank as you. well. And joining us via Zoom, we also have Precious Ankoma. She's a project lead for Pen Plus Bytes Info for All Project. Good to have you join us this morning as well. Uh, let's Thank start off this conversation with access to information and how much information Ghanaians have had over the past few months since COVID-19 hits the country. I'll start off with you. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Thank you very much. And then um, hello once again to your viewers. Um, since COVID-19 hit Ghana, that is in March, um, sometime early March, mm. and information has um, been on, on the increase in, uh, on the ascendancy. In fact, uh, because of um, social media, um, a lot of people now have access to information, trying to know about the disease, wanting to learn about the new things that are happening, the mm -hmm. numbers increase. And so there's been a lot of um, demand for information and on, 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 on COVID-19. And then um, I would say that in terms of fact checking, um, there's an issue of uh, people. We have realized that as people are demanding for information, people, others are also using the uh, um, advantage to push in um, false and fake news yeah. into um, the system. Just like before you went on, you indicated that there are people that are taking neem leaves and um, mm. using it as a medication for yeah. um, the cure for COVID-19. So these, all these things are out there and nobody seemed to uh, counter this. And even, um, even if they are countering it, there are a lot of people that don't believe in this. And so the Media Foundation for West Africa, our fact check project, looks to debunk these issues okay. and make sure that information going out is factual, is accurate, and that it is also timely. If that's the case, what do these organizations do? And let me bring you in. Um, so how do you then try to debunk some of these issues that come up? And I'll come to you shortly. Yeah. yeah. But go ahead, please. Precious. Okay. So for us at Pen Plus Bite, we realized that um, infodemic, as was described by the Director General of the WHO, is dynamic as much as the virus is. And so what we think is um, fake news now mm -hmm. might actually not become fake news for someone else. So the subject is quite um, um, diverse for us. And so we sought to make everybody the rural Ghanaian, the urban Ghanaian, get access to information that are relevant for them. Okay. And so we thought to build a platform, and the platform has two purposes. Number one, it's an information hub. And number two, it is to collate um, feedback from citizens about how government is handling the entire pandemic. Yeah. And so this platform actually has a, a means of given information that is relevant to your community mm -hmm. because then there are untold stories in the communities that are not being heard here in Accra. Yeah. So until yesterday, I didn't know that people don't go to the hospitals because they claim that once they get to the hospital, there is a disease there that they can attack them and there is no cure for that disease. Hmm. And that is happening somewhere in Wa. And this is not fake news. It is actually happening because they have been informed that um, the disease spreads easily yeah. and, and once you get to the hospital hospital and um, workers are even catching the disease 
So we, we are bringing out these stories as Templar sites so that everybody is aware within the community that this is what is happening. But then there are other means of getting access to health and care without yeah. going to the hospital. For instance, going to the CHIPS compound or getting mobile health um, um, workers to visit your home. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that we are doing here at Templar sites. As much as we are debunking fake news and trying to make Ghanaians in media and information literate, we are also trying to bring out stories within the community that are untold and people are really not giving much um, attention to it. But that's the issue then, because we have a lot of people who are unfortunately not privileged enough to get access to information. And so if we're even making efforts to educate these people, what about those who live in the hinterlands? Because again, this weekend I was up north and a lot of them said, well, it hasn't come to our community. It's only the people who live in the other side of the world that are getting it. So we don't think it will come to us. Christopher, what do you have to say about this? Knowing very well that talking about marginalized people, persons living with disability are also people who are considered uh, as marginalized and barely get access to a lot of these resources and information. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so for persons with disabilities, <laughs> it has been very technical. Mm. You would notice that for ever since the pandemic hit, um, the pandemic hit us, you know, it's been very challenging mm -hmm. getting people to actually bring persons with disabilities on board, on board yeah. making them understand that, look, these groups of people, in attending to them, it becomes very, very technical. So you'd have to make sure that your messaging actually is accessible, mm -hmm. is timely, and even the format with which you are even using to get to them is one that they can actually access. Yeah. So that has been the job of the Federation. When, when this whole COVID started, with the Ministry of Information coming out to reach out to the public, the president, yeah. his, his address, you would notice that there were no sign language interpretations. Uh, yeah. So the, the Ghana Federation of Disability Organizations, together with the National Council for Persons with Disabilities, took it upon themselves to actually, you know, um, call on the office of the president, mm -hmm. you know, these are very challenging times, but don't leave us behind. Yeah. People are in even the hard to reach areas. How do they, they don't have access to internet. No. So you're using social media, but how about how these about people? Them? So for, for the Ghana uh, Federation of Disability Organizations, we've been getting in touch with our district offices mm -hmm. and making sure that for the members who find themselves in these district offices, they are actually being informed. Okay. Just like my, my colleague said, there is this influx of fake news. And if you don't, if you are not careful, persons with disabilities would follow what is not the right thing, yeah. would not believe that there is COVID, and may end up, you know, taking some concoctions or some things that are not even going to help them in the first place, left alone if they should even contract exactly. the, the, the COVID or the coronavirus. So we've been up to speed with trying to get members. And it's, it's been technical. You're looking at the... Mental Health Society of Ghana, mm -hmm. the uh, Ghana Blind Union, the Ghana National Association of the Deaf, Sheke Ghana, Inclusion Ghana. You know, these are very technical ways mm. or technical members where you don't just put them all in one box, one box and say, these are persons with disabilities. And so this is the best way we can actually well, reach them yeah. with information. So it's been very technical. Have we noticed some of these gaps that exist and how are we addressing them then? I think that's what... Yes, um, so... Um, for us, I think the, the, the gap that um, exists currently, as um, Christopher uh, uh, just started explaining, is the gap between um, what government is doing and what civil society is also doing. Mm. As you can see, we've had, um, 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 Christopher had just mentioned that um, there's a challenge of having information. Go ahead information reach out to um, persons with disability. And that is uh, one of the things that I think if we have a, a coordinated effort um, from government and then civil society will be able to bridge this because I think government is doing so much, mm -hmm. civil society is doing so much, but we seem to be working in silos. Mm -hmm. And so if we have this coordination whereby um, civil societies uh, work that it is doing is seen and appreciated by government and government leverages on these um, 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 opportunities, I think we can have a, a holistic fight okay. towards um, the, uh, the pandemic because really Corona is the enemy and not each other. Why has it been so easy for governments, and I'm, I'm not blaming them necessarily, but why has it been easy for them to 
even though put out policies, but sometimes forget to include policies that favor a lot of these people. Like we're saying, social media, we seem to share a lot of information on there. We think that everybody has a smartphone, so it should be easy for us to log on to Instagram or go on to any news <laughs> portal and get the information there. So that seems to be the first point of call when we have to put out information. Mm -hmm. But again, that person who lives in that remote village and does not have access to even a YAM phone. That is true. How did they get it? How did we get to that point where it looks as if all these people are sidelined and they are not considered firsthand when we're putting out some of these information pressures? I, I think the problem actually starts from data. So the lack of data on the, seg the different segments of our social being is what has affected us so far. If we are able to tell, for instance, the number of um, persons with disability or the mm -hmm. number of deaf persons. But we have that data, do we not? Well, no, who own smartphones, for instance. Okay, okay. Then we are able to target our approach to these people. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we have data that speaks to these different segments, so for um, um, the Ghana Blind Union, do they have a database of persons who own smartphones, mm -hmm. who own people phones, who have no access to technology, whose only means of getting information is, for instance, their community radio stations? Yeah. If we are able to have such segments, then we are able to target uh, our communication and, and approaches to these persons, and then they get their news, and they are able to um, understand it in their own language and, and move with it as and when they need to. So I, I think it's about data and segmented data. Yeah. Actual, actually. yeah. Do we have that segmented data, Christopher? Um, before, before answering that, she spoke on data. Mm -hmm. It is one of the key activities that even the federation has taken upon itself within this five months okay to make sure that all the organizations under the federation are updating their membership base okay to understand the numbers that are involved here some are recording twenty six thousand members mm -hmm. some are recording nineteen thousand it gives you a clear understanding of the targeted number we are to reach but even with the issue of, on data i would also like to touch on meaningful involvement okay in the area where for the government make, coming up with some such decisions, how meaningfully involved are the you know, CSOs mm -hmm. or, for example, the, G, the, the federation or disability groups represented in these decision-making boards? Because at the end of the day, you are targeting the citizen, which is good, but you should understand that there are some category of people who need to be represented in this board for us to even understand how best we are going to approach reaching out to them yeah. so these data is an issue but at the end of the day even with the decision making board how meaningfully the the, the, the key word here is meaningfully not mm -hmm. just being involved mm -hmm. but how meaningfully involved for example during the lockdown period there was the um you know the the one hot meal a day yeah but it came under a lot of issues one is that persons with disabilities who find themselves at the, under the category of high-risk patients have dietary requirements. Mm. They, they can't just go about eating just anything. It worsens the immune system that they are trying to, to you know, put build. in yeah. place where, so that if COVID gets in touch with them, they are rather in the best shape to, exactly. to recover. So that was an issue. Some of these, other, uh, 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 another issue was even at the distribution centers, practice social, practicing social distancing wasn't upheld mm -hmm. and access to these meals for somebody in a wheelchair and maybe it is you know in on a on a higher ground how yeah. do you access so you see these technicalities if persons with disabilities have a very good representation on these decision making boards these kinds of issues will be well addressed table, so yeah. that when they are churning out these policies or these interventions you, nobody will be left behind. I think that, that would be the, the, the good word. Tell us more about these challenges that persons with disability have faced since COVID-19. Because you touched on the sharing of hot meals and how uh, inaccessible, it was, mm. inaccessible it was for some people. Mm. And also uh, a few other issues. Touch on them and let us understand what are the biggest problems that you have faced. Stigmatization has been on the rise. For persons with, for disability. persons with disabilities. Why stigmatization? Persons with, al um, for example, persons with albinism mm -hmm. have been tagged as carriers of the coronavirus. What? Yes. <laughs> I've not heard this. True. Um, a lot of things are happening. A lot of things are happening uh, at their blind organism. side. Yes. There have been increased levels of anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. There is a worsened situation of access to healthcare already. Mm -hmm. Even before COVID-19, persons with disabilities already had issues accessing healthcare. 
So with coronavirus now coming and, you know, all the health, you know, uh, the hospitals trying as much as possible to, you know, adjust to the situation, yeah. how, how has the situation now even been for persons with um, um, disabilities? disabilities? There are some persons with disabilities who need, they, they are on regular medication. Uh -huh. So whether there is uh, COVID or not, they take medications on a daily. Exa and a perfect example is hydroxychloroquine. Yeah. But would you, would you, can you imagine that during the lockdown period, even to this very point, the prices of hydroxychloroquine skyrocketed because people were now trying, people heard that, oh, okay, this is the medication that can actually, you know. Are they OTC drugs? Um, Hydroxy of the counter? No, no, they are prescribed medications. Okay. But the, the issue is that these are medications people take on a regular, COVID or no COVID. Yeah. They take because they have autoimmune conditions. Uh -huh. But now that you skyrocketed the, 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 the prices, how then do they even now come and purchase these yeah. medications? The disability organizations too have been under a lot of distress because members are calling in. They need help. Mm -hmm. They need attention. They need the support. During the lockdown period, people were sharing meals. How was it reaching the far, uh, hard yeah. to reach areas? Yeah. Even here in Accra, some, some mothers were complaining that because they couldn't take their children with disability, to these um, places, they couldn't, they couldn't get, get access yeah. to their meals. What about loss of jobs and you know businesses that mm. were destroyed as well? How did that impact? It, it it had a really disturbing you know. For already you should know that persons with disability fall below a lot of them fall below the poverty line, mm -hmm. and so with their little jobs what, what they have. What percentage of, of persons with um, I don't I don't have details. I don't okay. have that that detail. Okay. But for a person with disability who depends on going to the market every day mm -hmm. to sell. And then you now have um, a lockdown where they, are, they now have to stay home. Or a mother who cares for a child mm -hmm. with disability. How do they cater for this child who needs constant care? Yeah. A child who can't even be socially distant from. Because you need to make sure that your child is, is okay. You are, you are in fear, you are in anxiety, but this child needs your help. So these have been the technical issues and the very sidelined issues that persons with disabilities have gone through. Jobs have been, you know, affected. Yeah. Um, even now, people are still asking themselves whether it is safe to go out. Mm -hmm. Re remember, um, persons with disabilities, not all persons can even adhere to, to the social, social protocols. Yeah. Some have um, respiratory conditions. Putting on a nose mask is a no-no. Because -no. Hmm. they can't breathe. They already have respiratory conditions. So putting yeah. on a nose mask makes it even worse. So how have they been managing Especially if they have to go out and work as well. Some have no other option than to do that. And it has been very difficult for them. Some have actually decided not to even go out at all. How do they feed if they don't go out? <laughs> that has been the challenge. And all these, have they been tabled to the uh, you know, ministries to ensure that you know, persons with disability are So protected? we are actually advocates. We are actually raising our voices. We are actually meeting with um, you know, the government institutions, trying to make sure that the issues of persons with disabilities are really upheld. But even right now, the Federation, thanks to Star Ghana, is actually working on some activities mm -hmm. to make sure that persons with disabilities are well informed. You know, they are kept up to date with, with what is actually going on. But, I mean, with what I've just outlined, it just gives you a clear picture of yeah. what persons with disabilities are actually going through in these times. How are the CSOs uh, managing these situations? Let me come to you, Adiza, too, because... I'm sure that you, you're very much aware of some, some oh, of the yes. issues that, especially persons with disability, and this is just one group of people who are marginalized, not to talk about other situations as well. How have you been able to step in to provide support for these people? Right. So um, with our um, project on fact checking, mm. um, some of the misconceptions that he raised are things that um, our team of fact checkers have looked into and then brought out credible information to diffuse people's minds about okay. um, this. So is that this about is, one of them he, he so mentioned? Was albinism, is, yeah. for instance. So we, we, we make people aware that albinism is not um, a COVID um, issue. How did and so, become... and yeah, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's amazing the kind of Mindset, information yeah. that people hold there. Recently, one of our partner radio stations, Joy FM, for mm. instance, and by the way, we are working with about you can, 50... You can clip your nose, because I see it keeps <laughs> yeah, it very keeps, hard, so it stays exactly, in place. Exactly, yeah. thank you. So we are currently working with some 50 radio stations scattered across the mm. length and breadth of Ghana, mm. um, and we are doing this um, at a national, regional, and community-based 
levels to make sure that um, this information that we fact check goes to these um, people mm. at every sector and in different languages so that they will understand. And one of the things that we are doing is giving access platforms to persons with disability mm -hmm. to tell the world or to hold government accountable by letting government know their challenges. Yeah. And so, for instance, in, uh, in the eastern region uh, like this, one of our radio stations there um, um, created, gave the platform when we did um, a report on um, um, the stimulus package. Mm. Yeah, so um, they aired the, the report, discussed it, and then um, the callers, most of them were PWDs, so they were, they were asked, okay. so what is in, in for us as uh, PWDs? So um, w they all decided, okay, then let's give them a special platform for them to come and then talk about their issue. Okay. And this got to the Lower Mania Krobo, um Chief Executive Director, mm. and then also other um, um, district executives who have come in and given them some self-sustaining support. Okay. So we, 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 we give these radio platforms as much as possible to persons with disabilities. Every report that we put out, we ensure and we insist that our partner radio stations make this okay. information available okay. to them. Okay. I, I want to acknowledge the National Board for Small Scale Industries. I was going to ask about yes. access to, you know, support yes. from, from so, government. So they came up with, you know, a stimulus package. Yeah. And we encouraged persons with disabilities to Supply. actually sign up. Mm. And we actually met with the executive director of MBSSI. And from then they have prioritized applications that have come from persons with disabilities. I because, see. you know, just to make sure that they are even receiving quickly. And okay. so as I speak... Some persons with disabilities have actually, you know, um, you know, given the information that yes, they have indeed received some help okay. to help them, you know, with their businesses. Yeah, that's yes. great. So, so we are grateful to. What would have been better, though? Don't you think that maybe they could have set aside a separate fund for persons with disabilities so that they don't tend to compete? Because even if they prioritize them, you're still competing exactly. with everybody else yeah. who has. What do you say about yeah. that? Well, we would. You, there's there's a lot that needs to be done. One is what what you just said, mm -hmm. making sure that you know there's the, the the real understanding or the true understanding of the issues of persons with disabilities is actually well addressed. Okay. So even if there is that kind of a separation of funds to directly target persons with disabilities, it goes a long way to help you know mm. alleviate the anxiety and the depression levels that they are currently going through, and even with other forms of interventions like. Uh, you know, making sure that other organizations understand how to approach disability issues. Mm. We actually, we actually uh, met with the Health Promotions Unit of the Ghana Health Service in June, okay. introducing the Federation to them because in these times, you really need to understand how you are going about your messaging. Yeah. So we actually made them understand how even for some of the, when you say social distancing, a, a person with intellectual disabilities, you need to break that word down. You, you don't say it as it is because they may not understand. Mm. The Ghana Blind Union is actually putting their messages in different odd, uh, languages. Yeah. So it's not just English. Tri and the other local aware, the northern languages, to make sure that it is getting to everybody. Mm -hmm. So a lot of interventions are needed. A lot of interventions are needed. Let me bring Precious in. We seem to have left her out for <laughs> oh, quite a while. Tell me what Pen Plus Bites has also been doing uh, with regards to some of these issues that have been raised by Christopher in the studio concerning persons with disability? Okay, Bella. Um, I would first off want to commend Sagana Foundation because they have created a partnership next of about eight organizations mm. who are working hand in hand to make things um, a bit easy for us during this pandemic. And I, I would want to say that we as Pen Plus Bites are working in a collaboration with all eight partners in making sure that um, information is easily accessible. And yeah. it's not just any information, but it's credible information, it's factual information, mm -hmm. it's real-time information, mm -hmm. and it's information that is relatable for every person. Yeah. So um, for us at Pen Plus Bytes, our work has primarily been technology-based because we are tech, um, a civic tech organization. And so we have built this platform, www.covid19infogh.org, mm. where um, it's, it's a very interactive platform. So there are, there are WhatsApp features, there are videos, there are infographs, 
and everybody can access it once you have a smartphone or internet access. Yeah. And this platform seeks to do is one, like I mentioned, give you enough information about what is happening within your community around COVID-19, and then also to and give you an opportunity to contribute your knowledge or in how bad or good you have benefited from this pandemic. Because actually, some people have benefited in, in, in um, the positive from the pandemic because they are making business and earning a lot more than they are supposed to on a normal day. Mm. So, um, 10 plus bytes have given this avenue because we want to influence policy. Yeah. We realized that governments um, stood up to the time and brought about some policies that were to mitigate the impact of the pandemic. But then they weren't um, um, citizens influenced. So yeah. people did not have a say in it. So the platform is collating people's feedback. And this is going to form a policy brief, which um, the CSO platform on the SDGs would come up with. Mm -hmm. And then we would um, um, come to the table with government and stakeholders, and then we will try to plan better ahead for such emergencies should they happen in the future. So Pen Plus Bites is out there making sure that persons with disability, rural dwellers, women, women especially, career women who are also women with disability are not left out in any way. Absolutely. Now, I remember there was a conversation we had with some students, um, visual impaired students. They came into the studios and were complaining about learning materials and uh, not getting access to e-learning materials as well. And I remember we had that conversation also with the executive chairman of GNEC, uh, the Ghana National Education Campaign Coalition, Mr. Joseph Atru. And so he eventually came back and had printed uh, books with large text. Uh, he did books with Braille so that mm -hmm. students with visually impaired um, challenges can also access education even though a lot of them cannot mm. uh, get into schools mm -hmm. now. I don't know if you were aware of some of these issues, but what have you been able to do as a federation to support a lot of these students as well, who unfortunately are living with disability but are not getting access to education and by so doing getting access to the information as well? So the, the Ghana Blind Union has had some engagements mm. with some of these stakeholders, these institutions, to bring to bear the situation of persons with you know visual impairments yeah. or blindness uh, i was in pram pram um, last month to speak to a lady who is a level 400 student at the uh, school of education Weneba. yeah and she's in pram pram mm -hmm. access to internet over there she, she's even in Ningo, Ningo mm -hmm. old Ningo, very, very you far, know yeah. and access to the internet when you say e-learning you, you you it takes it to access to some of these platforms where you can easily now learn and mm -hmm. she doesn't have that i believe that her situation is the same as a lot more other you know visually impaired students yeah. who are actually trying to get access to this so as, as it stands we are trying we are trying as much as possible to engage the stakeholders just as she did to make them understand mm -hmm. that you know even with the education system now everything has been you know has come to uh, has suffered a challenge due to COVID. but in addressing these issues how are you putting in place the, the large prints, for example, is just a, a section of yeah. persons with blindness mm -hmm. who have maybe low vision, so mm -hmm. they need a bigger text. How about people who need Braille? They actually printed books with Braille. With Braille. In there yes. as well. You, and and uh, one of the great experiences I've had, personally, is even with the Ghana Blind Union and how they, they, they actually segment some of these materials. Mm -hmm. Not everybody knows how to use a Braille. Yeah. Not everyone knows how to even go on social media. Some people need audio. Mm -hmm. Some people need large prints. So, like I said earlier, these are very technical issues. So, you don't just address one and then and leave the, the other. other yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Very interesting, I must say. But we've been speaking to um, Adiza Tomorrow Maiga, who's a project coordinator for the Media, for, uh, Media Foundation for West Africa COVID-19 Fact Check Project. And also Precious Ankuma on Zoom, who's a project lead for Pen Plus Bytes Info for All Projects. And also we've had Christopher Agbega, who is the project lead, um, uh, project coordinator, pardon me, for the Ghana Federation for Disability Organizations. And we've been having a conversation about how, um, you know, accessible information has been during COVID-19. We're still grappling with this, but uh, there's a lot of information out there. One thing I've heard for the first time is the fact that people are being accused, and these are persons... Uh, with albinism, I've been accused of what being the ones transmitting the virus. Ah, yes, I heard of the virus. 
pareas of the virus. How, How? on earth <laughs> would anybody even think that? Uh, we're, we're busting that myth today, just in case you're one of those people who's been wondering if it's true or not. We're saying for a fact that it is false. It yeah. cannot be. No. It's a novel virus. We're now learning from it. I don't know how anybody assumed that it would come from persons um, with albinism. But anyways, let's take a look at what CSOs have been doing in order to um, you know, make information accessible to all citizens in the country. But thank you all so much for speaking to us this morning. It's been a pleasure. And Precious, thank you for joining us via Zoom as well. And we hope that we can have more conversations like this so we can create yeah. more awareness about it. But take a look at this video. Hello Ghana, my name is Abeku Agri Santana, a broadcast journalist with Despite Media Limited and also managing director of Kaya Tours Ghana Limited. As you already know, COVID-19 has brought a lot of strain on us in so many ways. But did you also know that government has in place program that is supporting citizens under this COVID-19 pandemic season? Do you know the COVID-19 alleviation program by government? Well, if you did know, let me also ask you, have you benefited from any of this COVID-19 alleviation program? And do you know how you can benefit from this program? Has the pandemic affected you in any way? Are you looking for answers to how you can survive under this COVID-19 pandemic season? You can share your experience with us if you have benefited from any of the COVID-19 alleviation program. Kindly log on to www.covid19infogh.org. This is a very interactive platform. It doesn't matter whether you are highly educated or not. You share your experience with us. It's an information platform where you can share your information on COVID-19 and how you are surviving and how you have benefited under any of the COVID-19 alleviation program. Pen Plus Byte, in partnership with Star Ghana Foundation, has put up this platform. Log on now, www.covid19infogh.org. You get to benefit from answers from experts on this platform. Learn to live the new normal. Get well informed. Log on now and be well informed. www. COVID-19infoGH.org. Thank you. www.COVID19infoGH.org is an initiative by Pen Plus Byte with support from the Star Ghana Foundation. For further inquiries, contact us on 0302-922-620 or WhatsApp on plus 233-241. 9957370 or get interactive on social media with the hashtag CSO COVID19